In this month's show, we celebrate a milestone. 500 days to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 kickoff. We'll meet the Indian captain who's one of the world's international top scorers. And we'll catch up with the heroes who qualified tiny Iceland for their very first FIFA World Cup. In less than 500 days from now, Qatar will host the first FIFA World Cup in the Middle East and Arab world. The tournament will kick off on the 21st of November 2022, when Qatar, the reigning champions of Asia, play the opening match at the stunning 60,000-seat Albait Stadium. 500 days to go means that we're getting very close to the tournament. It's, uh, it's been 10 years in the making. And uh, this is the biggest event that has ever happened in the Middle East. It brings the world together. It brings the Arab world together. It's a moment of pride in the history of this part of the world. And uh, as we move closer to the tournament, uh, we're sure that the excitement is going to keep building even further. The country will host the most compact version of the tournament in modern history. All eight stadiums are within a 50-kilometer radius of central Doha. The compact nature of uh, the FIFA World Cup in Qatar uh, is probably the uh, most uh, positive attribute of this World Cup. For fans, they also don't have to follow their team from city to city, which means that there's a significant cost saving. And it also means that they have more time to enjoy the city, um, uh, take in the experience, and enjoy what uh, Qatar has to offer. Qatar's FIFA World Cup infrastructure projects have already reached 95% completion, while the remaining four stadiums should be ready in the next few months. Uh, if we look at the metro, we look at the roads network, the highways, uh, the airport expansion, uh, we're in a very, very good place and we'll be ready in time for the World Cup. So all the stadiums will be ready before the end of the year, which gives us a whole year to be testing uh, all the stadiums. Six of the stadiums will be used for the FIFA Arab Cup 2021, which will kick off this November. Involving 16 teams from across the region, the tournament will take place exactly a year before the start of the World Cup. It's an important event for us. It's an event that brings together the Arab world in such an important uh, tournament. It's the first FIFA Arab Cup uh, in the history, so it's, uh, it's under the FIFA umbrella of uh, events. And for us, it's going to be a, a great opportunity to make sure that we test the teams, we test um, the new stadiums, and also to prepare ourselves for the FIFA World Cup in 2022. The facilities and infrastructure of the FIFA World Cup will, in one way or another, make a difference to many people's lives far beyond 2022. From the very beginning, uh, legacy has been front of mind. Uh, when we look at the stadiums, their legacy plans have been taken into consideration in the design phase. We see some stadiums, they will have a reduction in capacity from 40,000 to 20,000 and so forth. One of our stadiums will be completely dismantled and a lot of the seats in the stadium will be uh, donated for the development of sporting uh, infrastructure in other countries. Qatar has invested more time and money than any other FIFA World Cup host nation. Ten years of planning and execution will be put to the test over the next 15 months in preparation for an unforgettable FIFA World Cup. In June, Doha hosted the centralized Group E matches in the second phase of the Asian qualifiers for the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. Thanks to the Qatar Football Association, the Indian squad could avoid the COVID-19 restrictions at home, getting together in Doha two weeks before their qualifying matches. We are very happy. 
With the approval of the Qatari government, the efforts of the Indian government and our own football organization, we could come to Qatar 10 days before the planned trip. Even though we were in quarantine, we could make good use of that time, working together in the hotel. In their first match against Bangladesh, Indian captain Sunil Chetri was ready to make history. Scoring a brace, he briefly moved into third place in the international top scorer rankings of active players, with 74 goals for India, moving ahead of Lionel Messi in the process. I see the names in that uh, chart, and I feel completely honoured to be there, but that's about it. I'm a fan of all of them. There's Ali Dai, there's Ronaldo, there's Neymar, there's Lewandowski, uh, there's Messi, all of who I learned something or the other from them, all top class players in the world. And uh, I don't take that chart too seriously. I, I'm just happy that I get an opportunity to play for my country and I, and I could score goals every now and then, and that's about it. With 118 caps in his 16-year international career, Sunil Chetri has become a football icon in India, adored by millions of Blue Tigers fans. For me, an absolute blessing and, and, and honour. And uh, the least that I can do is not take it for granted. And I try to do as, as good as I can. And I'm just living a dream. It's, 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 it's amazing. To, to be captain of India is probably the, the, the best thing that happened in my life. We in the Taco is Sunil. When it comes to promoting football, Sunil is incredibly important for the younger generations. He attracts the youngsters to football, not only because he is the best, most committed player in training, but also because he is an undisputed top scorer and one of the ten internationals who scored many goals for their country. He is really very important for the Indian youth. With a defeat, a win and a draw in their three matches, India put in a respectable performance, especially after their struggle with postponed fixtures due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Half of the players haven't played since February. But when we did get together, the message from our coach was simple, that do not cry or crib about what you haven't got. Just give your best, that's all is what I demand. That's all we agreed as players, that whatever is happening, which is not in a hand, is not in a hand. Uh, but uh, when, you play, when, you, when you wear this and you, when, you, when, you, when you play for the country, that's the biggest uh, uh, duty and, and, and privilege that you can have and just go and give your best. Though eliminated from the FIFA World Cup qualifying phase, India are likely to book a place in the AFC Asian Cup China 2023. Indian football has been developing fast in the last few years, despite cricket's long-standing popularity in the country. We are a big nation, we have to, and we should aspire to do well in all the sports. We definitely have the talent. We have to work a little bit on, on infrastructure and identifying the talent at the right time and giving him or her the right tools to, to improve. But I don't think it's any problem that cricket is doing so well. We can have different sports doing well in our nation. We can easily make space for all the other sports because we are a huge nation. Next year, India will host the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup. It will be the second time the country has hosted an official FIFA tournament and a good chance for Indian girls to meet players from all over the world. I've always said this, that uh, our, our women's team the senior team and, and all the young ones, they're, 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 they're really good. They, the, the chances of them uh, advancing and bettering their ranking is a little bit better than us. So I just hope they get all the support. Uh, you know, as, a, as a country, we have to do that. We have to make sure that at least the, the opportunities are given so that they can grasp it and, and, and make our country proud. After four weeks of training camp and official matches in Doha, Sunil Chetri knows exactly what to expect when the world's greatest sporting event is held in Qatar. Well, it's almost always amazing to play in, in Qatar. Uh, the, the, the facilities are, are top-notch. They really take care of us, which I'm really thankful. I uh, want to wish everyone in Qatar all the very best. It's a, it's a huge moment. It's not, it's, it, it's not something which is very common. You know, an Asian team getting the, the, the rights to host the World Cup, I hope 
the hospitality which i'm pretty sure is going to be great and a lot of people can come to qatar and enjoy the world cup Hi, I'm Ricardo Moura, the manager of Epanema, a Brazilian restaurant in Qatar. Let me show you now our specialty, the true Brazilian barbecue. We're now in the kitchen where everything starts. That's where we prepare the meat before it goes to the burner. As we do in Brazil, the waiters take the skewers all the way to the table. Just like in football, we have a red card that you can show to the waiter when you are full, or the green card if you are still feeling hungry. Barbecue is the official dish of football in Brazil. Whenever there is a derby or any kind of celebration, like a birthday, barbecue is the dish of choice for any Brazilian family. The World Cup match I remember the most is Brazil and Holland in 1994. The game was tied at 2-2 when Bronco was fouled and shot the free kick himself. It was such a relief. Ten minutes to go. I cannot forget that. The other game I will always remember during Brazil's 94 run was the semi-final against Sweden. It was a very difficult match. Brazil missed a lot of chances until the very end, when Romário finally scored, saving the day and sending Brazil to the World Cup final. I've come to Qatar because of the World Cup. I have always worked around big events, so I can say that the World Cup brought me here too. Besides, I am very happy to be in Doha because I have learned a lot about the local culture and so has my family. In the evenings, I like to go to Souk Wakif, which is a traditional market in Doha. It's a fantastic place. There, you can buy perfumes, spices, and all kinds of typical Middle Eastern products. I think the World Cup in Qatar will be something from another planet. I have never seen a country with so many brand new stadiums. Safety and security have been a top priority, and they are really well prepared under all aspects of the event organization. It's really going to be incredible. As for me, I will try to attend as many matches as possible. The Doha Metro reaches almost all stadiums. Going by Metro, you can easily see two games on the same day. The Brazilian fans coming to Qatar will find a fantastic country, ready to welcome them. Many of them were here in 2019, when Flamengo played Liverpool in the Club World Cup. And for all other fans, I hope they can taste the Brazilian barbecue at Ipanema and they can enjoy the beauty of Qatar, this pearl waiting to be discovered. Arabi is the second oldest football club in the Qatari Peninsula. In December 2018, they hired the Icelandic coach, Haimeha Grimson, to help them improve their record after nine barren seasons in a row. But Grimson did not come alone. 
Three months after his arrival, he brought to Qatar the mythical Iceland captain, Aron Gunnarsson. And soon, Al Arabi fans were marvelling at Gunnarsson's skills. For Grimson and Gunnarsson's most impressive achievements, however, started in 2016, when Iceland made a remarkable debut in the UEFA Euro and in the following year became the smallest nation ever to qualify for the FIFA World Cup. It was, of course, a great honour to play a first World Cup when you come from such a small nation. For a long time, people would say that Iceland did not have a big enough population to go to the World Cup in such a massive sport like football. For us, as players, we know that it's something that will never be taken away from us. We worked hard for the qualification. We put a lot into it and made huge sacrifices to achieve that. I'm very proud to be part of this generation and this team that qualified for the World Cup. In their debut match, Iceland played Argentina, runners-up at the tournament in 2014. What happened next is now part of football history. The Minnows held the Giants to a one-all draw, shocking the football world. To think that we played Argentina with Aguero, Messi, Di Maria and these world-class players. The little Iceland was playing against them at the World Cup. You know, it just sounds surreal. But we had such a high self-esteem that we really believed we were going to win those games, even though we were facing those big nations. Next came Nigeria, who, having lost to Croatia, were desperate for a win. Iceland held firm in the first half. It was nil-nil at the interval. But then things got difficult. Nigeria scored twice after the break. The second half against Nigeria was most likely the worst of the six halves we have played during the tournament. I guess there were many reasons for that. And one was that it was extremely hot that day. And Nigerians are perhaps a little more used to warm temperatures than us Icelanders. In their last group match against Croatia, there was still chance to book a place in the knockout phase. One goal down in the second half, Gilfie Sigurdsson equalised from the penalty spot. Iceland kept fighting until the very last minute when Ivan Perisic scored a late winner for Croatia. The Icelandic adventure in the 2018 tournament was over. I'm still very proud of how we played and how we handled the pressure of playing in our first World Cup. And, uh... Just too bad that we didn't manage to go further. And now we look back on the tournament as a disappointment, because we had such a great belief in ourselves. We didn't go there just to take part and look up the big nations. We were determined to go further, but couldn't make it. Still, there's nothing to be regretted. Iceland have had a bad start in the European qualifying matches for 2022. Though they defeated Liechtenstein, they've already lost to Germany and Armenia. Next up, Romania in September. Looking at the group, I think that we have a chance to qualify. We have five home games in the next international dates. We have to take advantage of that. We need to take advantage of our strong home record, getting good results there, and of course, we need to win as many games as possible, hoping for the best. If they qualify for the FIFA World Cup finals in 2022, the Icelandic team will have a unique advantage. A captain who knows Qatar well and who has already played in the tournament's brand new stadia. I feel that Qatar is very well prepared. They're making sure it's going to be a memorable World Cup. They're putting a lot of money into the infrastructure. 
the arena, everything focused on the tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing what the World Cup will be like. The Qataris are aiming at making it the most talked about World Cup in history. After three seasons at Al Arabi, coach Jaime Halgrimsson is now leaving the club. Aaron Gunnarsson, however, will stay to keep on entertaining the Qatari crowds. Next month, we'll meet former Cameroon international and four-time African Player of the Year, Samuel Eto'o. We'll taste authentic tacos prepared by a Mexican chef who's mad for football. And we'll discover the history of club football in Qatar through the eyes of a former player turned football historian.